every saturday sunday and monday morning between the hours of 6 and 7 am eastern time this meditation session takes place now that the clocks have been set one hour behind for the winter season so the time in the eastern region becomes five o'clock instead of six it seems it is my responsibility to see and wait that everyone wakes up and gets ready to attend to this session my role is that of a gardener to keep the rose bed prepared so that when a plant is to be planted or a seed is to be added to the soil the soil is well placed and there is no problem for the process of growth of the seed or the plant but the seed will grow out of its own intuition so is the case of the flower flower plant and so is the case of an individual the upanishad series fatalist approach we have an approach of a fatalist towards life what is the difference between a fatalist and just floating feeling that everything is beautiful there is a vast difference between the two and the difference is not quantity instead it is of quality the fatalist is one who has not understood life instead he has felt failure a fatalist is one who feels helpless and frustrated in fatalism he seeks consolation from someone he says it is going to be so he is trying to avoid that he has failed it was going to be so so what can be done or what can he do he is throwing the responsibility on fate on god on x y and z i am not responsible what can i do it was written in my fate it was predetermined predestined he is saying and i am not responsible he has failed indeed now in the deep frustration he is trying to find some refuge fatalism is a great consolation it is as if my own hands starts fighting with me and starts trying to have its own destiny separate from me i am going to the south and my head starts going to the north it is not only so foolish instead it is impossible as well certainly foolish and impossible and frustration is bound to be there sooner or later the hands will see that the hands wanted to go to the north but it is going to the south deep in frustration the hands will say it is fate and i am helpless and the other thing is just floating feeling everything is beautiful it is not a consolation instead it is a deep understanding it is not fatalism or failure or helplessness it is simply a deep insight into reality as things are 
it is to understand that you are a small part of the cosmic whole and you are not separate you are one with the continent you are not an island either remember these lines may autumn bring a new portrayal to spring certainly there is deep meaning in divine scheme of things to happen every very early in life i learn to float with existence it was my uncle the nakshbandi sheik omkar nath who had given me the ever couplet shayad khiza se ho koi nayi surat bahar ki kuch maslahat isi mein hai mere parwardigar ki may autumn bring a new portrayal to spring certainly there is a deep meaning in divine scheme of things to happen in life of a tree there are various seasons a spring is followed by autumn when all leaves fall the tree becomes bare the tree becomes bare and tree never laments or considers it to be its destiny instead it accepts everything as it is and in that very acceptance something begins to happen to it during autumn old leaves fall new foliage comes in after the autumn the season of spring comes in and as the season of spring comes new leaves begin to appear on the tree the man of awareness understands that everything comes from the divine everything means i mean everything everything comes from the divine and in the scheme of divine there can be nothing wrong there is a total acceptance and this acceptance this acceptance becomes the way for transcendence to happen understanding that ego is false the separation is false and understanding that you are not separate you do not have a separate destiny than the whole that a drop in the ocean does not need to worry about its own destiny the ocean has to worry about it certainly is the drop is certainly not helpless in fact it realizes tremendous force once you are unburdened by yourself once you are no more worried about yourself you become a tremendous energy then energy is no more is struggling instead now it floats now you are not fighting with the whole instead you understand and you are marching ahead with the whole then you are not trying to prove anything against the whole because that is simply a foolish thing that you cannot do in fact the feeling of helplessness arises because of the struggle when you understand that you are part of the whole when you are part of the whole that in fact the whole has been trying to attach some heights through you you are only a passage a vehicle 
and suddenly all frustration disappears. When you do not have a goal of your own, how can you be frustrated? When you do not have to prove anything against anyone or anything, or you do not have to struggle, there is no need for fatalism, any consolation. You simply dance and flow with the whole. You are the whole. That is the meaning when Upanishad says, Aham Brahmasmi, I am ever expanding consciousness. That is the meaning when Jesus says, I and my God are one, not fatalism. This is not settling in helplessness. Instead, it is a state of knowing that we are one with the whole. Then your atomic tininess disappears. You become co cosmic and just floating and feeling that everything is blissful. Then you just float and there is nothing to do. The same energy that was trying to fight now surrenders. Then you are not pushing the, ri the river. You simply float on the river and river takes you. The river is already going to merge in the ocean, you are unnecessarily worried. You can simply leave the, that responsibility to the river. Whether you leave or not, it is already going. There is no need to fight, because in fight there is going to be frustration, and in frustration you will seek some way to console yourself. And whenever you are seeking the way to console yourself, fatalism is born. If you do not fight, then everything is just beautiful. Why? Because then you do not have any idea of your own to compare it with. Everything is beautiful and there is no other way. You do not have any conflict. Hence, everything becomes beautiful. If the river turns to the right, you turn. It is beautiful. If the river turns to the left, perfectly beautiful, you turn to the left. If you have some ideas and goals, you will say, I am leftist. Then there is going to be trouble. When the river starts turning towards the right, you will say, now it is going too far and I cannot surrender. I am a leftist. Then you will start fighting against the river. River means life is a river that is constantly flowing. And then the river will not be beautiful because your idea, your ideal has come in. Whenever ideology comes in, Things become ugly. All idealists live in hell. Ideology creates hells. If you do not have any ideology, you have nothing to compare and there is no criteria. Then whatsoever is happening is happening. You have nothing to compare it with. Then whether the river is going that is the only way to go. Then you simply allow existence to have its way. What never comes in the way, there is a deep let go. Then everything is beautiful and then you realize that it has never been otherwise. Everything was beautiful always. Look at the animals, the birds, the clouds, the trees, the stars, the moon, the sun. Ask the tree, ask the stone. Everything is beautiful. The tree must be very much surprised that you look so sad. 
the tree must be puzzled that man looks so burdened when everything is so light and so floating. The birds must be laughing at you that you are carrying a burden on you. The load seems to be nowhere except in your mind. You are so much burdened that you miss life, love, celebration and laughter. You cannot sing or dance or laugh and because of this you become des desperate and you start fighting even more. You think you are not fighting as much as you should. That is why you are not happy. Once a man came to me, he was very rich, but very reluctant to accept that he was not happy. People do not accept that they are not happy. They are unhappy, but they never accept it because that is very ego shattering. They are unhappy. It is impossible. Remember only an unhappy person tries to prove that he is happy. Only a sad person tries to prove that he is not sad. Only a dead man tries to prove that he is alive. Only a coward tries to prove that he is brave. Only a man who knows his inferiority tries to prove that he is superior. You go on trying to prove the opposite of what you are. And possibilities are 99 out of 100 that you are just the opposite. When you smile, I can see hidden tears. When you try to dance, I can see the rock-like heart within that cannot move. Dancing is impossible. Why is man in such plight? The whole world laughs, the tree laughs at you. You may not hear. You may be escaping. You may have become deaf. The birds laugh, the animals laugh. Everything has gone. Something has gone wrong with man. What has gone wrong with him? Only one thing. The whole of nature is flowing and man is fighting. In nature the ego does not exist. Trees are there but without any ego. Only man is with ego and that ego creates the whole problem. That ego means a continuous fight because it feeds on fight. The more you fight, the stronger your ego becomes. It makes surrender very difficult. But unless you surrender, you will remain in constant misery. Surrender is the door to bliss, to beauty, to truth, to love, to life, to God. Surrender is the door and when I say surrender I do not mean that surrender has to be towards someone. It is just an excuse. Because you cannot surrender unless you have someone to surrender to. That is why someone is needed. Otherwise there is no need. You can simply surrender and the door opens. That is what Buddha said simply surrender but that looks very difficult for the mind you need some excuse jesus says surrender to god if you cannot just surrender and then surrender to god krishna says if you cannot surrender then surrender to me let me be the excuse but when you surrender then you know that Krishna tricked you. When you surrender, you will not find Krishna there. Instead, you will find the whole cosmos and you are floating into it, part of it. Then you are no more separate. You are not going on your own way. 
then everything becomes beautiful and blissful. Without conflict, ugliness disappears. Without conflict, sadness disappears. Without conflict, sorrow disappears. And then whatsoever remains is beautiful and it is so. But it is not fatalism. It is not any kind of ism at all. It has nothing to do with faith or predetermination or any other kind of nonsense. It has simply to do with the insight that I belong to the whole and the whole belongs to me. That is my home. I am not a stranger and there is no need to fight. With whom are you going to fight? All fight is foolish. Surrender is wisdom. Fight is a stupid, float, flow with the flow, move with the whole. Do not have private dreams, goals or private ideology. Then this moment you live and when the next moment comes, you live it again. One moment unfolds into the other and you get a long chain, long beads of the moments, one moment unfolding into the other. That is the meaning of using the rosary that you learn how one flows into the other. One moment flows into the other and each moment you are remembering that which is. That is the purpose of the rosary. You have to learn to flow from one moment into the other. If life is there, you live life. If death comes, you live death. Whatsoever happens, you are grateful to it. I have heard about a Sufi mystic who used to pray and every day thank God. His disciples were worried. Many times they were very much puzzled because sometimes it was okay to thank God because things were going well. But the man was absolutely unconcerned about things. Sometimes when things were going very badly, then too he would give thanks. This is the story of you and I, that we thank God all the goodies that we get. And when we do not, we complain. So one day it was too much, the disciples were hungry and starving for three days and they were not given any refuge in any town. They were thrown out, people were very orthodox and the master was a revolutionary, very unorthodox, non-conformist, non-traditional and unconventional. So no village would allow them even to have shelter in the night and they were without food. On the fourth day in the morning when the master started praying, the disciples said, now it is going too, too far. He said to God, how wonderful you are. You have always given me whatsoever I need. And one disciple said, wait one minute. Now it is becoming absurd. What are you saying? Three days we have been hungry and dying. There is no shelter in any town. And you are thanking God that whatsoever you need, he always. And the mystic started laughing. And he said, yes, for these three days we needed starvation. For these three days we needed to be rejected. He always gives whatsoever we need. When he gives the autumn to a tree and leaves turn gold and fall, the tree needs that for its survival, for its healthy survival. It is necessary that the old leaves fall and when they fall they will become manure and fertilize the tree once again, provide new energy to the tree 
and then when new spring comes new foliage for three days we needed to be poor absolutely poor whatsoever we need he always gives and i'm thankful for it thus he started praying and thanking god and being grateful if you are not fighting then an understanding arises that everything is beautiful and whatsoever is needed is happening whatsoever is needed for your growth is happening sometimes poverty is needed sometimes starvation is needed other times illness is needed in fact i have not come across anything which is not needed sometimes to someone everything is important if you understand you accept if you accept you grow if you reject your whole energy becomes a wastage in fighting the same situation could have been a growth now it is simply a wastage and leakage do not be a fatalist because in the first place do not fight if you fight you get frustrated then fatalism enters in from the back door in the first place do not fight one man came to me and he was in much trouble because he got married and found a woman as almost all people find a very quarrelsome woman continuously fighting and creating hell for him he came to me and said have compassion on me and he said i would like to ask one question what would you have done in my place i have told him in the first place i would have not been in your place why should i be a man who is floating accepting and understanding has no need of fatalism in the first place he is not fighting so there is no need to seek some consolation fatalism is the end of wrong life and feeling of let go is the beginning of the right life they are vastly different and qualitatively too remember the difference because it happens that you would also like to say good things about your failure when you fail you start saying now i am in a let go never try to deceive yourself because you are deceiving only yourself the existence is not deceived if you have failed try to understand why you have failed in the first place you start fighting that is why if you understand that then even your success will look like failures they are sooner or later each success becomes a failure it is only a question of time that you call success is failure on the way so if every man is given enough time to fight then success and failure will all disappear and everybody will become a fatalist that is why in ancient conditions fatalism exists for example in america fatalism does not exist if a child country it is a child country just 300 years of its history it is nothing in india fatalism exists because of thousand years of history so old and so ancient that it has known all success and all failure it has known all types of frustration now finding no other way it seeks consolation in fatalism as a country grows old and this is also true for everyone when you are young you are not interested in fatalism but as you grow old you have witnessed the seasons of success and failure that you turn 
and become a fatalist. Old people become fatalist because by the time they come to know at least one thing that they have failed, then they find consolation. The whole basis is wrong. In the first place, do not fight. Then there will be no need to fail or succeed. There will be no need to fight and console yourself. Each moment becomes a blessing if you do not fight. And then there will be no need for fatalism or any. You flow with life. You move moment to moment and the journey of the life continues. Fatalism is not the way floating with the river of life is the